thing, I have to do it like this. See that? Hey, good morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning, everybody. Morning. morning. Monette was just reminding me about this cup. Look at that. Of course, you can read it in reverse there. <laughs> Making work values work. Yeah. This was a giveaway that uh, she gave to her um, employees in the clinic. <clears throat> a few, when was that? That was a few years ago. Right, yeah. The title of my uh, second book, Making Work Values Work. Anyway, good morning. Again, morning. it's Friday. Friday. It's Friday, March 15. It's March 15 already. Okay, today the gospel is going to be read at church, at Mass. And it's the gospel about... Um, it's the gospel from St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 20 to 26. In this gospel, our Lord reminds us about a few good things. <laughs> As always, our Lord reminds us, of course, about a few good things in the gospels. But today, he's telling us a story of that man or the Pharisee, right? He says, uh, Jesus tells his disciples, <clears throat> sorry, I tell you. Unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. What kind of righteousness is he talking about here? Of the scribes and Pharisees. It's really the righteousness of hypocrisy. Okay? The righteousness that is a consequence of hypocrisy. What's hypocrisy? Do we know what hypocrisy means? Yeah. Mia does. What does it mean, Mia? <laughs> what about Joe? Joe, why do you volunteer Mia? What about you? What's hypocrisy? It's when you tell people to do stuff, but you don't do it yourself. Okay. It's like a case of uh, do as I preach, but, but not as I do. Okay. In other words... Uh, in other words, it could also mean, you know, appearing goody-goody, right? To be appearing goody-goody in front of other people. But the truth is we are not sincere about what it is we are doing. And there is no, there is no internal uh, reconciliation between our actions, our external actions, and what we, our internal dispositions, what we really really uh, have inside of us and so our lord is saying hi to the poly good morning hi ray good morning hi to the poly. <laughs> yeah. so our lord is saying here if you are at the altar and you're presenting your gifts at the altar your sacrifice at the altar and then at this and then you suddenly realize oh uh that you have something uh between you and a brother of yours okay <laughs> Then he says, leave, Jesus says, leave your gift there, reconcile, go reconcile with your brother. Okay? What is our Lord trying to tell us there? Well, you know, if we harbor uh, sins in our hearts, if we, if we carry the burden of sin in our hearts, it is best that we first clean our souls. It is best that we first go to confession and clear our conscience of the burdens that encumber our soul and then and then we go and worship God and then we go and practice our good uh, pious uh, actions and then we go and we pray and then we go and offer sacrifice okay? our Lord is saying it is better that when we go and offer sacrifice to God and when we go praise God our consciences are clear clear of sin Okay? That is what our Lord reminds us here. Because otherwise, it will be hypocrisy. We'll be hypocrites. When we tell our Lord uh, uh, all, sorts of, uh, all sorts of good things, when we, tell, when, when we present ourselves to our Lord as though we are clean, but then really inside of us, we are full of sin. Okay? So our Lord is telling us here, that is hypocrisy. That is the righteousness of the Pharisees. Right? The Pharisees. 
So the Pharisees always want to display their good self, their good side. The Pharisees always want to display how pious they are, praying all the time or wearing those long phylacteries and, and robes and things like that in order to appear to people as being goody-goody, only a good in appearance, right? But inside of them, what does our Lord say? They are like tombs full of rottenness, full of bones, full of rotten flesh. See, because that is what a sinful soul looks like as far as God is concerned. So in order to have that sincerity in our practices of piety, in order to be to really show God our sincerity in loving him, in worshiping him. Well, first thing we need to do is we got to make sure our souls are clean. Our souls are pure. Because as our Lord says, you know, you fool. <laughs> See, you're only fooling yourself. He says it right here. You fool. You will be liable to fiery Gehenna. What does that mean? <laughs> you think you can appear goody goody while you are harboring sins in your soul? You fool. You're going to make, you're going to be punished. You're going to make up. For all of that foolishness and that hypocrisy in hell. See? In hell. Who wants to go to hell? Anybody? I don't think so. Right? Not a good place for anyone. God is not there. We'll be, we'll be in the company of devils there in hell. Right? We want to go to heaven. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Heaven is the promised reward for our good life on earth. Eh? And for our love for God. And for our service to others. So there's where we want to be. There's where we want to go. We don't want to be punished in hell. So what our Lord is saying. Well then therefore you better make sure that you are not hypocrites. Eh? That there is really sincerity in our love for God. In our love for neighbor. In our service to God and service to neighbor. We have to be sincere and not hypocrites. And if we know that there is some sin in our soul. Well, let's put the effort to clean our souls up. To clean it up. Number one, by how? What's the best way? Confession, Joseph. Confession. Make a good confession. And this time of Lent is a perfect opportunity to make a very, very good confession. If you haven't gone to confession in a long time, confession is available, available to you, for you to clean up your souls. Okay, what else can we do besides going, making a good confession? What else should we do in order to show our sincerity in wanting to uh, clean up our souls? What else can we do? What is part of confession? What is... One of the five parts of confession that we should have after mentioning our sins to the priest. Huh? Oh. Yeah, uh, to have a purpose of amendment. Very good, Sophia. In other words, we have to really sincerely try to fix the problem that causes us to sin. Right? We have to fix the problem. We cannot just keep going to confession and telling our Lord, I'm sorry for being like this. I'm sorry for doing that. But there is no purpose of amendment. That we really, we're, we're, we're not really trying to put the effort to cure the problem of our soul. We're not really to, we're not ready to go and do what it takes in order to rid ourselves of the bad tendencies and the bad habits and the sins that encumber our souls. If we do not have that purpose for amendment, then we are not sincere. We're actually just being like another Pharisee. We're being hypocrites because we keep going to confession and we keep committing the same sins. See? There's lack of sincerity. There's no purpose for amendment. Right? Uh-oh. What keeps on dropping there, Joe? Right? Of course, it's a different story if we are struggling and we, and we fail and, we, and we, uh, we still commit sin. That's a different story. Our Lord understands that. But 
it's also another story if we just keep committing sin just because we are not sincere with our purpose of amendment and we are not really fighting to uh, clean up our uh, bad tendencies and, and get our act together so that we go on the straight path to heaven. Now, besides making a good confession, purpose for amendment, what else is another way by which we can make up for our sins? Here on earth, so that we don't have to make up for them in purgatory. Because, because when we die, okay, number, well, let's clear this up. When we die with mortal sin, where do we go? To <clears throat> hell. To hell. <laughs> no question about it, right? We go straight to hell if we die with mortal sin. But, if we die, and fortunately we don't have mortal sin, but we have venial sins, where do we go? Purgatory. To purgatory. That's right. Why do we go to purgatory? What's purgatory for? To purify our souls. Like it's the clearing house, right? Where, where we have to pass through first in order to really, really purify our souls so that when we're really purified and ready, that's the only time our souls and we will be accepted in heaven. But, but do you know that there's a shortcut? There can be a shortcut to purgatory. Either you skip it or you cut your time short in purgatory. What is the shortcut to purgatory? Joe? Mortification. Very good. We already do our purgatory where? On earth. We can already do our purgatory on earth. Right? Why? How? Well, if we offer up to our Lord all of our difficulties, all of our struggles, all of our sufferings, we can cut short our purgatory. And we can hopefully uh, make up for our sins here on earth rather than suffer them uh, in purgatory, rather than make up for them in purgatory. So those are three very good things to keep in mind this Lent and to, keep, uh, to, to practice this time of Lent. Number one, make a good confession and do it as often as possible. In the Kleachko household, our schedule is to do it every week. Every Saturday morning, we line up for confession, all of us from papa to mommy to all seven children oh well, not seven yet uh not everybody is going to confession yet but all five children at least go to confession now so and then of course kobe joins us for confession okay i have to make sure your mommy hears it like kobe goes to confession yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, so confession and try to do it as regularly as you can, as often as you can, because that is a very good practice. Number two, number two, have a good purpose for amendment all the time and really be sincere in trying to make up for our sins. And number three, try to practice some mortification, some sacrifice that you offer to our Lord in order to make up for your own sins. And the sins of others. That's right. Also for the sins of other people. Okay. Well, that's it for us, folks, today. And uh, hi, Bong. The classmate is uh, watching. Bong Veracruz, hi. Uh, where are you, Bong? Are you somewhere in a different part of the world? Maybe in the Philippines? It must be evening there. Good evening. Okay. Well, uh, it's a weekend already here in... Uh, in, uh, in Modesto, in the Cleachco household... And I hope you guys have a good weekend wherever you are in the world. Uh, hopefully we'll see each other again tomorrow for uh, another commentary. And watch out for these commentaries. We do this every uh, 7 o'clock, uh, our time, of course, California time. We do this every day as much as we can. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a good way to share about the gospel message. And I do this for my children. I do this for my children every day. And, uh, you know, if some of you would benefit from uh, hearing this message, then uh, uh, hope God blesses you for uh, hearing it. Well, thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. We'll go to Mass. We're off to Mass, folks. Bye. Have a good day.